the first topic in polity and governance is digital rights so digital rights means the basic rights of the people in the online environment like the right to access digital data the right to use digital data create digital data and publish digital media which are like right to freedom of speech and expression so here recently uh, in january 2022 european commission has proposed some set of digital rights and principles so these set of rights and principles include the right to participation the right to use green technology for sustainable growth the right to use technology to promote unity among different countries the right to have safe and secure environment the right to have safe from illegal and harmful content and the right to support democracy so all these are the principles of the digital rights next is uh, the initiatives which are taken by india to promote digital rights is one is india's personal data protection bill uh, this is for indian safety and protection of their personal data and next is national policy on universal electronic accessibility so this is for equal access of digital accessories to all specially abled persons so the next topic is electronic voting machines evm and so here this evms are designed to modernize conducting elections so evms can be transported anywhere and they run with an ordinary battery evm consists of two units one unit is control unit and the other one is ballot uh, balloting unit this control unit is is uh, will be there with the presiding officer to verify the voter identity and the other unit that is the balloting unit is kept in the compartment for casting vote and another machine which is called vv pad that is voter verifiable paper audit trail trail so this vv pad will also be attached to the evm which helps the voter to verify their vote so this is about electronic voting machine the next topic is local reservation in private sector so in this topic the haryana uh, government has introduced the haryana state employment for local candidates act 2020 which provides 75% reservation to the local candidates in the private sector jobs which offer less than 30000 salary not only haryana has introduced this even the maharashtra andhra pradesh madhya pradesh karnataka have also introduced this similar act to reserve private jobs for the locals so the important articles under this topic that is local reservations that is regarding employment is article 16 so article 16 states that without discriminating upon place of birth or residence all citizens should get equal treatment in matters of public employment and the next article uh, and the sub clause is article 16 clause 2 so under this article 16 clause 2 it states that no citizen should be discriminated in matters of religion race caste sex place of birth residence or any of them article 16 clause 3 states that only parliament can make a law upon employment of a particular state so regarding the laws passed by the state government upon employment only the parliament has the power the state legislatures have no power to make the laws upon the employment in a particular state so so this also was in court next topic is hyderabad declaration on e governance adopted so here e governance means making the process of governance digital 
for faster delivery of public resources for maintaining land records digitally for handling public problems online etc e governance system was been introduced so ministry of electronics and information technology and department of administrative reforms and public grievances with collaboration with the telangana government has adopted this hyderabad declaration to promote the e governance some initiatives of e governance are bhumi project of karnataka which made land records online next is e seva of andhra pradesh where people can apply register online for any public services next is gyan doot of madhya pradesh which is uh, for the service delivery next is lokwani of uttar pradesh it is launched for solving public issues land record maintenance and providing essential services and the last one is friends friends initiative of kerala which means fast reliable instant efficient network for the disbursement of services so see these are the initiatives of e governance in different states the next topic is district good governance index released so it was launched by department of administrative reforms and public grievances with jammu and kashmir administration so 20 districts of jammu and kashmir has participated and uh, in this index jammu district has stopped followed by doda samba pulwama and srinagar so this index this uh, index this competition will be held to improve the district level governance and to promote competition with other districts under this initiative so next one is corruption perception index so this uh, index was released by transparency international and india was ranked 85th out of 180 countries so the countries which topped this index is denmark new zealand finland next one is open data week so here open data is the data which is made available to all the citizens this data can be freely used reused by the citizens so this data can be freely used reused okay so for example if uh, any project was done by any government professor or any student it will be made available to promote it will be av- available in the open data portal okay so this this data will be used to promote the innovation and economic growth so under this open data week 100 smart cities have participated and high quality data data blogs are published on this portal called smart cities open data portal next is cabinet approves extension of tenure of the national commission for safai karamcharis ncsk for 3 years beyond 2022 so here national commission for safai karamcharis act was passed in the year 1993 to implement the prohibition of employment as manual scavengers due to manual scavengers they are prone to skin diseases lung diseases and other types of diseases so to prohibit these things national commission for safai karamcharis act was introduced in 1993 it was initially extended to 1997 then again extended till 2004 and further extended till 2022 and now it was extended till 2025 despite of forming a non statutory body of national commission for safai karamcharis to stop the manual scavenging it has not stopped till date and is further extended till 2025 to prohibit the manual scavenging criminal laws amendment so this topic was in news because the center has initiated the process of criminal law amendment because many crimes like many new crimes like financial crimes white collar crimes 
etc. have not been mentioned in the Indian Penal Code of 1860. So, to address the new crimes, an amendment was made by the center. So, here the criminal law and uh, criminal procedure will be coming under the concurrent list of 7th schedule and police prisons will be coming under state list of 7th schedule. So, one important committee to remember here is the Malimath Committee. It recommended to reform the criminal justice system and Indian penal code based on the present society. So, next topic is social media and politics. So, social media has turned up to be as the major source to address the political issues and politicians are using it widely to influence people. Thus, after the pandemic, social media is playing a key role as the medium of expression of both public as well as the political parties. The third topic is uh, identification of minorities. So, in any state, the guidelines for identifying minorities will be introduced by the center under Article 30. Okay, the guidelines for minorities, for identifying the minorities will be introduced by the center under Article 30. So, uh, in our constitution, the definition of minority is not mentioned, but Article 29, 30, which tells about the rights of minorities and 350A and 350B which uh, talks about the protection of linguistic minorities are mentioned. So, minority word is mentioned under Article 29, 30, 350A, 350B. So, um, United Nations Human Rights Commission in 1946 has defined minority as a group of people who are less in population and their language, ethnicity, tradition should be protected by the authorities. So, this is about identification of minorities topic. The next topic is um, Election Commission of India restores maximum limit on star campaigners. So, the star campaigners are the famous political people who are uh, nominated by their political parties to campaign during elections. So, the maximum limit of the state campaign star campaigner of the recognized political party is 40, whereas for unrecognized political party, the maximum limit of star campaigners is 20. So, this, uh, this concept of star campaigners is also mentioned under Section 77 Clause 1 of Representation of Peoples Act 1951. The next topic is Government Approves Implementation of Interoperable Criminal Justice System Project. So, here under this project, the data of the criminals are shared among the five pillars of criminal justice system under the e-committee of supreme court so those five pillars of the criminal justice system are police e-forensics e-courts e-prosecution for public prosecutors and e-prisons so national crime record bureau and national informatics center in collaboration with all the states and union territories will implement this project under the principle of one data one entry so the justice delivery system will be fast and more transparent next topic is uniform civil code so it is mentioned in article 44 under directive principles of state policy the uniform civil code means only one law for the entire country at present different religions religious communities have different laws across the country but this uniform civil code promotes one law for the entire country in matters of marriage divorce inheritance adoption till now only goa has implemented the uniform civil code next topic is one nation one elections so at present 
the states in the country all the states in the country have different election years so elections are not held at a time in the in all the states at one single time so this is leading to double cost for elections security and wastage of time so prime minister has already suggested the election commissioner of india uh, election commission of india to conduct simultaneous elections across the country and even the chief election commissioner has agreed to take further initiatives uh, to conduct the simultaneous elections so this is about one nation one election the next topic is the criminal procedure identification act 2022 so under this law national crime record bureau will store all the information of the criminals like body measurement iris and retina scan signature handwriting etc so if a person has committed offense against woman or child then biological samples can be collected forcibly under this act so under this law new methods of criminal investigations was introduced the next con- topic is national commission for scheduled tribes so for the protection of scheduled tribes the national commission for scheduled tribes was added in the constitution under article 338a through the 89th constitutional amendment act of 2003 so the main duty of national commission for scheduled tribes is to submit a report to the parliament annually regarding the development programs welfare programs of the scheduled tribes annually but as per the standing committee on social justice and empowerment this national committee for scheduled tribes has not submitted any report from the last 4 years so this commission specially focuses on protecting the rights of the scheduled tribes developing them uh, socially and economically as well the next topic is draft india data accessibility and use policy 2022 so under this the data will be open and shared among all the government ministries with some exceptions so this was released by the ministry of electronics and information technology so if the data is available easily for all the government ministers then it will be easy to implement the government policies manage administration better and become more transparent etc so this is about uh, this uh, draft one the next one is supreme court has enforced a landmark ruling on death penalty so here under this uh, channu lal verma versus state of chatisgarh case the supreme court stated that the courts should consider the f- psychological and psychiatric evaluation before awarding the death penalty to the person so their psychological uh, state also should be considered before awarding the death penalty next is wearing hijabs is not essential religious practice rules says the karnataka high court so here the right to freedom of religion was given under article 25 so karnataka high court stated that wearing hijab which is the head scarf wearing hijab is not a part of essential religious practice in islam faith and it is not protected under article 25 so wearing hijab in educational institutions comes under the reasonable restriction under the constitution next topic is census rules census new rules notified so the first synchronous census was held in the year 1881 from then every 10 years the census will be conducted 2020 census was postponed due to the pandemic so as per new rules new rules were issued to conduct census so as per the new rules census will be updated digitally through the electronic form and self enumeration so another one is npr 
npr is a national population register will also be maintained so this national population register is maintained for registering the residents of the country so the next topic is ministry of information and broadcasting holds consultation with film industry on proposed amendments to cinematograph act so under this new rules were made so the government has the power to suggest the central board of film certification that is cbfcs to recertify a film and section 6a a was also introduced to counter the piracy of the movies the next topic is election freebies so election freebies means giving free electricity or other free services to the people these election freebies as the term says it is uh, of it is a offerings by the politicians when they when they uh, campaign during elections so after they come into power they distribute free, free electricity or free tvs free f- smartphones free laptops to the people so the the main uh, effect which will come after this election freebies is there will be a collapse in the state economy and economic growth will reduce so the 15th finance commission chairman has raised the concerns regarding this election freebies because due to freebies the state may become bankrupt the economic stability of the states can can get decreased and there is there are political issues also when political parties when one party in power distributes all the things freely the other parties don't have the option to get a positive impact by the people so regarding uh, political issues also will be there on this election freebies so uh, n- not every freebies are for uh, are negative to the development but some freebies like education health service and which satisfy the basic needs of the poor people help to improve the standard of living but freebies for their political benefits might unstabilize the economic growth of the state so this is as per the 15th finance commission chairman report the next one is urban local bodies so delhi municipal corporation amendment act 2022 was enacted to reunify the three municipal corporations of delhi if there is a gap in resources finance and for uh, to get efficient services the municipal corporations can be united or divided under the municipal corporation of delhi act 2022 the central government has the power to sanction the loans for the corporations to regulate rules regarding corporations etc so for a new corporation the total number of seats should not exceed more than 250 even if both the corporations are united then their maximum strength should not be more than 250 so a special officer is appointed by the center to exercise the powers of cent- a corporation till the first meeting is held so the municipal commissioner is made accountable to the center under this act so let's revise some of the basics of municipal corporation this municipal corporation was first set up in madras in the year 1688 The Lord Ripon who was the viceroy introduced elections in this municipal corporation and he is also known as the father of local self government in India so after independence the municipal corporations were introduced under 74th constitutional amendment act and it in uh, municipalities were introduced in part 9a of the constitution the next topic is localization of sustainable development goals the sustainable development goals were introduced by the united nations sustainable development summit in the year 2015 so there are 17 sustainable development goals which aim to end poverty inequality injustice and to tackle the climate change by 2030 
So, to effectively implement sustainable development goals at the local level, the Ministry of Panchayat Raj and United Nations Development Programme has signed a joint statement of understanding. So, some states have already implemented the localization of sustainable development goals. So, they are Navratnalu program. This program was launched by Andhra Pradesh to support vulnerable people in terms of agriculture, health, education, housing, entrepreneurship, development and social protection. The next one is Arunodai scheme. This was launched by Assam where some amount of uh, some amount is transferred to the women belonging to the vulnerable sections through direct benefit transfer. Next is Vikshit Bihar K7 Nishchai scheme was launched by Bihar to promote inclusion, entrepreneurship and women reservation jobs in jobs. Uh, better facilities of water, electricity, toilets and higher education. Next is government. Goa has launched two programs. One is Dayanand Social Security Scheme for single women, widow, HIV affected people, disabled people, senior citizens and other vulnerable communities. And the other one is Swayampurna Mitras program uh, to promote self-reliance in villages. The next topic is UIDAI, Unique Identification Authority of India. So, it is a statutory authority established under the Aadhaar Act of 2016. This was in news because the Comptroller and Auditor General has reported that the data of UIDAI is vulnerable and proper data protection measures should be framed to protect the data. The CAG has also in his report highlighted that highlighted some of the aspects so they are uh, the person who resides for 182 days or more than 12 months before applying is given the other numbers the uidai also did not properly prescribe any process so any process to confirm uh, that they are the residents of the country so anybody uh, even a foreigner who comes to India and resides for 12 months is also given the Aadhaar. So, proper uh, measures or proper process was not prescribed to confirm that they are the residents of our country. The next one is the Bal Aadhaar cards. The children under 5 years are given the Bal Aadhaar cards. So, with their, they, the children are given Aadhaar cards with their parents biometric information so because of this the uniqueness of Aadhaar is not followed and it is against the Aadhaar Act the next third one is data protection so the Aadhaar information of the dead persons is also present and uh, deduplication of Aadhaars are produced with the same biometric data. So, lack of proper infrastructure and technical support are some of the issues under this UIDAI as per the CAG report. The next topic is India's investigative agencies. So, this topic was in use because Chief Justice of India has called to create an independent umbrella institution for all the investigating agencies. So, the investigating agencies in India are CBI. So, uh, CBI Enforcement Directorate, Serious Fraud Investigative Officer Office and next is National Investigation Agency. So, coming to the CBI, CBI was a premier investigating agency established in the year 1963 under Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946. It is established under the recommendations of Santanam Committee on the Prevention of Corruption Act 1962. So, it provides assistance to the Central Vigilance Commission and Lokpal. Next is Enforcement Directorate. So, it is established in the year 1956 and is a specialized financial investigation agency under the Department of Revenue of Ministry and of Ministry of Finance. Next is SFIO. SFIO is the Serious Fraud Investigation Office. So, it is a multidisciplinary organization under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. 
it was given statutory status under uh, companies act of 2013 and has the power to arrest people for the violation of the company laws the f- next one is national investigation agency nia it was established under the nia act of 2008 Its main function is to counter terrorism. It acts as a central counter terrorism law enforcement agency of the country. So these four are the investigation agencies of the country. The next topic is the prison reforms. So Ministry of Home Affairs have issued guidelines for modernization of prisons project. There is overcrowding of prisons, lack of adequate staff, harassment on women prisoners. etc all these are some of the problems of the prisons in india even though prisons comes under the state subject of 7th schedule the center can frame guidelines to regulate the prisons so another two important words under this is parole and furlough parole and furlough are important concepts in this topic so these both are the short term temporary release from the custody under parole the temporary release of one month is granted and it is generally gla- granted in the case of short term imprisonment the furlough is a temporary release of maximum of 14 days is granted for the prisoners who are under the long term imprisonment so these are the two important terms next is phone tap phone tapping So an IPS officer was held for tapping the phone for political leaders in 2019. Phone tapping means secretly monitoring the communications and it is regulated under the Indian Telegraphic Act of 1885. So phone tapping can only be done in the interest of public safety, sovereignty and integrity of India and if there is any threat to any international relations so only 10 agencies have the power to tap the phone they are the intelligence bureau cbi enforcement directorate narcotics control bureau central board of direct taxes directorate of revenue intelligence national investigation agency raw directorate of signal in- intelligence and the po- delhi police commissioner so only these 10 agencies have the power to tap the phone so tapping any uh, tapping the phone by anybody is considered as illegal if the phone tapping is necessary then they have to seek permission from the secretary of union minister or uh, so they have to seek permission from the secretary of union ministry of home affairs through an order so the next topic is india stays out of global declaration on future on internet so to encourage the free data flow globally and to keep the internet open free and neutral globally 60 countries which include US European Union United Kingdom Canada and France have signed their treaty so but one uh, but the large nations like India Russia and China did not sign in this declaration so the, these countries the large nations like India Russia and China are not part of this declaration so one more Im- important information regarding the internet is the report called the return of digital author authoritarianism sh- internet shutdowns report was released and as per this report it stated that india is a top country to impose internet shutdowns in 2021 and in 2020 uh, and 2020 so in both years india st- has stood in top for internet shutdowns in 2020 for 29 times there was internet shutdown and in 2021 it was raised to 34 times so india was the top country to impose internet shutdowns as per this report the next topic is the department of personal and training lays down norms for quota in promotions so reservations in promotions for sc and st is again reintroduced and regulations are framed under the department of personal and training so one important uh, article to be 
learned over here is article 16 clause 4a so this gives power to the states to make provisions in reservation in matters of promotions for sc and st the next topic is rules for resignation and reinstatement of an ias officer so the resignation of an ias ips and ifs officers is governed under the rules 5 clause 1 and 5 clause 1 clause a of all india services rules of 1958 so if an ias officer is serving in the state then he has to submit resignation to the chief secretary of the state and if he is serving in the central cadre then he has to submit his resignation to the secretary of the concerned ministry or department so in 2019 an ias officer has resigned from the services and has been again restored why because the center has rejected his resignation why because he was involved in the political matters so in matters of public interest the central government may permit to withdraw the resignation and if an officer is associated with any political party or if he is if he take parts or assist in any political movement then the central government may not accept his resignation so the next topic is fast and secure transmission of electronic records so the cji has launched the faster portal that is fast and secure transmission of electronic records portal for the court officials to instantly send e copies of orders stay orders bail orders etc instantly so due to the delayed release of the prisoners even after the court order is passed the, uh, the prisoners are uh, impris uh, released lately so to tackle this problem the supreme court has taken its suo moto and has launched this portal to instantly send the e-copies the next one is broadcast seva portal so it is an online portal solution for applying different types of licenses permissions registrations etc so it is launched by the ministry of information and broadcasting the next topic is reforms in the seventh schedule so in the seventh schedule of constitution of india under article 246 we have three list one is state list union list and the other is concurrent list at present the union list has 100 items where defense foreign affairs railways banking etc which is of national level come under this list the second list is the state list it has 61 items where police, health, public order, sanitation, betting and gambling, etc. comes under it. The third list is concurrent list, which has education, population control, family planning, criminal law, protection of wildlife and animals and forests, etc. come under this list. Thus, uh, these lists are governed by center and state governments with the upper hand of central government so the concurrent list is mainly controlled by the central government so under 42nd constitutional amendment act forest and education were added to the concurrent list by removing it from the state list so due to dominance of center the state cannot exercise its full power over the education or protecting forest or sometimes doesn't take the responsibility over some subjects so due to the domination of center over the union list and concurrent list the center couldn't handle all the subjects due to overburden and the state couldn't manage effectively due to the center's dominance so these are the problems regarding the seventh schedule the next topic is death penalty or capital punishment supreme court reviewed the process through which the courts award death penalty so the death penalty is also called as capital punishment article 21 of the constitution states that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law and on the other hand other hand um, if anybody violates another's right to life then they have they risk their own right to life so by the end of 2021 488 uh,
prisoners were awarded the death sentence so under article 72 the president has the power to grant part pardon so under article uh, 161 the governor also has the power to grant pardon or reduce or suspend the punishment the next topic is sedition so sedition means the offense committed by a person if a person by words signs or through any visual representation attempts to influence people against government then he is imprisoned under the sedition law the sedition law is defined under section 124a of the indian penal code of 1817 so many freedom fighters like balagangadhar tilak ani bisent ali brothers maulana azad mahatma gandhi were imprisoned under this law so it has been 153 years so supreme court has suspended the uh, sedition law until the union government makes some changes or review review it the next topic is um, supreme court to have full strength of 34 judges so at present we have cji and 33 judges at the supreme court so including cji we have 34 judges so according to article 124 clause 1 the parliament by law prescribes the strength of the supreme court article 124 clause 2 states that chief justice of india and supreme court judges are appointed by the president with the help of the collegium system now what is the collegium system so the collegium system here is a committee which consists of the cji four senior judges of supreme court and three members of high court they give recommendations to the president on the appointment or transfer of judges of high court and supreme court the next topic is presidential poll 2022 so the president is elected by the electoral college consisting of the elected members of both houses of parliament legislative members of the states and union territory of delhi and puducherry so jammu and kashmir has become a union territory so the value of vote of mp has gone down from 708 to 700 the next topic is interstate council so according to article 263 a president can establish a council and define its duties so in the year 1990 as per the recommendations of sarkaria commission uh, an interstate council was established to solve the disputes between the states and the disputes between the center and states or the disputes between the center and union uh, union territories so in this council prime minister will be the chairman and the cms and administrators of states and union territories respectively will be its members the next topic is tiruvananthapuram declaration so it was adopted by the first national women legislatures conference so it focused on the long pending of 33% of women reservation bill in the parliament and the state assemblies so the global gender gap report also published that the world economic uh, this global gender gap index is published by the world economic forum and this uh, report has stated that there is a long gender gap and india has ranked 140 out of 156 countries the next topic is jammu and kashmir delimitation exercise concludes as panel signs final order so regarding the delimitation commission as per article 170 of the constitution the uh, this states that um, the states will be divided into territorial constituencies as per the delimitation act under this article the delimitation commission will be appointed by the president so under article 82 parliament forms a delimitation commission after every census so for the jammu and kashmir elections a delimitation commission was set up to redraw the boundaries of constituencies the next topic is place of worship act 1991 so under this act except ram janmabhoomi babri masjid case 
any place of worship like temple masjid church etc will not be converted into other place of worship the next topic is government flagged low score in world bank worldwide governance indicators so the worldwide governance indicator index was published by the world bank and as per this report india has secured 101 rank out of 116 countries the next topic is world press freedom index 2022 so it was released by reporters without borders a non cop non governmental organ non profit organization so the five indicators which were considered under this report are political context legal framework economic context socio cultural and safety so india was ranked 142 rank out of 180 in this report next topic is central information commission so this commission is a statutory body established under right to information act of 2005 so it consists of chief information commissioner and 10 information commissioners appointed by a committee consisting of prime minister and the leader of opposition in lok sabha and a union cabinet minister who is nominated by the prime minister so this topic was in news because the pending cases of right to information has been decreased the next topic is judicial accountability so judicial accountability means the judges and the court being accountable with their behavior and decisions as per the constitutional standards so orissa high court was the first in the whole country to publish its annual report on its performance so this is one of the example of judicial accountability the next topic is public interest litigation so public interest litigation is a power given by the courts to file against any violations of public interest like bonded labor environmental pollution food adulteration etc so this is based upon article 39a of the constitution which provides justice without any discrimination based on caste creed religion etc so in all aspects if it in, if it uh, violates the public interest then any citizen can file a pil so it was borrowed from the american jurispr jurisprudence but at present due to over usage of pil and to delay the development projects pils were misused so to, de to delay any government uh, project this pil uh, was filed in many cases so the supreme court has rejected some misleading pils and imposed penalties on it the next topic is hate speech so hate speech means any form of expression against religion caste gender etc which spreads violence communalism terrorism etc in the country as per national crime record bureau report the cases of hate speech raised to 500 percent the next topic is um, Rajya Sabha elections held for several states. So Rajya Sabha is a permanent house under Article 80 of the Constitution with, which has the maximum strength of 250 out of which 12 members are nominated. At present, we have 245 members in Rajya Sabha. So after every uh, second year, um, one third of its members retire so the elections are held by means of single transferable vote the next topic is registered unrecognized political parties so there are over 2800 political parties which have registered but went unrecognized so if a party wants to become a national party, then it has to secure 6% of total votes in the Lok Sabha elections or win the elections in four states and ha should have four Lok Sabha seats. And if a party wants to become a regional party, then it has to secure 6% of total votes in legislative assembly or win at least two seats in the state assembly. But 
if an unrecognized if a recognized political party doesn't participate in elections or it is not active then uh, that party can be stated as an registered unrecognized political party they do this because for money laundering so the election commission has deleted over 111 registered unrecognized political parties the next topic is national e vidhan application so it is an online portal where all the works and data related to legislative bodies of all states are kept online it improves transparency and eliminates the use of paper the next topic is contesting elections from multiple seats so as per section 33 clause 7 of representation of peoples act 1951 one person can contest from a maximum of two constituencies but recently uh, chief election commissioner advised that advised to make amendment in the representation of people act of 1951 to bar people from contesting in elections from more than one seat the next topic is anti defection law so anti defection law was introduced as the 10th schedule of the constitution through the 52nd constitutional amendment act of 1985 so it provides laws for the politicians who give up membership of their party and join other party and other such rules so under this anti defection law some grounds of disqualification are mentioned so some of them are if a member votes other others against their party decision or if a nominated member joins any political party after the expiry of 6 months or if an independent member joins any political party then they might be disqualified as elected or nominated members through the anti defection law the next one is national e governance service delivery assessment 2021 report so it is published by the department of administrative reforms and public grievances which comes under the ministry of personal and public grievances and pension so under as per this report kerala has stopped this report from all the states meghalaya and nagaland has stopped from northeastern states and jammu and kashmir has stopped from all the union territories so this is regarding this report